Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from executeautomation.com and welcome to part 2 of our build deploy test with Jenkins 2.0 for Java and C Sharp video series. And in this video, we'll be talking about installing and getting started with Jenkins 2.0. So before watching this part, I would request you to watch part 1 since this part is going to be a continuation of that part. Alright, so let's get started. Software prerequisite before we start installing Jenkins itself. So we need the following software installed before we getting started with Jenkins 2.0. Something like very very simple specifications like Java, the latest version is good, and also Jenkins var file. So these are the two most important prerequisite software that we need to getting started with Jenkins. And the supporting tools are going to be like Maven, NUnit, Nugget, and Git. So these are the supporting tools that we require for getting started with Jenkins 2.0 as a most important prerequisite as well. Because we will be working with these tools along the line with our course. So please guys, if you have these very very simple tools, you are pretty much ready to go. But if you just compare a little history of how we installed or how we saw the prerequisite on Team Foundation server, it is very very huge. You need to have a Team Foundation server specifically installed for a good performance in a Windows Server environment and you need to have a database server where the database server can be a SQL server with analytics service enabled and text and search service enabled and you need to have a full-blown SQL server enterprise edition for a good result. You cannot just have a express edition for that case. So it was very very huge requirement just for the SQL server alone. But if you see there are other requirements like hardware requirements and software requirements was very huge in Team Foundation Server. Because Team Foundation Server, as I already said, is not just a continuous integration tool. It is really, really bigger and it's otherwise called as an application lifecycle management system. So it is really huge than compared to Jenkins. But just if you want to do a build, deploy and test, Jenkins is more than enough than going with Team Foundation Server itself because it does the job for you. But for instance, even in the Jenkins world, if you want to go with creation of a test management or if you want to create some kind of wiki, then you need to go with the Confluence. There is something called as Jira that you can purchase and you can just plug in with Jenkins and that performs the operation for you. Again, those are separate tools and you need to just configure them along with Jenkins to perform those operations. But, but Team Foundation Server is really a full-blown thing. Right. So as I already said, software prerequisite for Jenkins is very, very less compared to Team Foundation Server itself. All right. So let's not really talk a lot about that and let's get started with Jenkins itself. So for that, I'm going to flip to Windows 10 virtual machine right now. So this is my Windows 10 operating system. It's a virtual machine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to install the Jenkins right now into this machine. So once again, as I said, the installation is pretty straightforward in Jenkins. All you have to do is just go to Jenkins and if you just hop over to Jenkins.io, you can see that within this website, you can find how to install Jenkins itself. So the current version is 2.3.2, which is an LTS and there is a 2.45 weekly release version as well. So you can take anything you want. So if I click this download Jenkins, you can see there is a LTS release and there is a weekly release. So you can take anything you want. And basically there is like a var file you can download for Docker, FreeBSD, Gento, Mac OS, Windows, and so many other versions you have. Similarly, you have the var file for the weekly release as well. So you can take anything if you like but right now I'm going to take the LTS support version so I'm going to choose the Windows and if I choose Windows and if I click download it is going to download the var file for me all right seems like there is some kind of uh, blocking by Google it's okay we can just see this is fine for me so I'm just going to visit this website and you can see that it is going to download the var file for me so basically I can cancel this because I have already downloaded this and it is available right now in my C colon of this machine. So if I just navigate to that particular drive, there is something called as a Jenkins folder. I just created a Jenkins folder here and I just put this Jenkins.var file. Right? And as I already said, there is no database required. All you have to do is just spin up this var file using Java. That's it. You're pretty good to go. As I already said, we need to also have Java installed in our machine. So if you want to check if you have Java in your machine, just hop over to command prompt and type Java hyphen version. You can see there is a version available. So Java version currently I have is 1.8.0. So this is the latest version I have. 
So I'm just gonna do this. I'm just gonna go to the E colon, C colon, and Jenkins, and here I can just go to the command prompt, run as an administrator. That's, that will give me more privilege. And then I can just type java hyphen jar jenkins.war. If I just hit that, you can see that it, it is automatically starting it as a web root for this particular user home. And there is something called as dot Jenkins. So we'll talk about that in a minute, but you can see that it is also creating a lot of things. It's saying that failed to delete the temporary winstone file. Of course, there is no such file exists. That's why it is failing. And it is logging in and it is logging the initialization. And you can see that it is asking me that, do you want to allow this? Of course, I'm going to say yes. So that it will set the firewall else it will be blocking and it says completed the initialization so everything is right now running but if you just go over here you can also see there is something called as password so this password is automatically generated for you and this is something which you require while you start the Jenkins for the first time in your browser so I'm just gonna copy this and I'm gonna go to the Chrome and let's type localhost colon 8080 and now you'll be greeted to Jenkins page. You can see that the Jenkins is automatically loaded by the way. And here we go. You can see that it says, please wait while Jenkins is getting ready to work. So right now it is initializing and it says unlock Jenkins. See, this is the password. It is actually expecting us to be passed. And the password is nothing but the password that we copied from here. So I'm just going to paste it and I'm going to hit continue. I will never save it. It is going to take a while because it is setting up a lot of things for you and it is asking whether do you want to install some plugins which is suggested so basically you can just hit the install suggested plugins because those are really really helpful to get started with so i'm just going to download that it is going to take a while for me because the the virtual machine internet connectivity is pretty slow in my machine at least and now we just let's see behind the scene what's really happening. See, it's actually going to the Hudson.model update center and it is downloading the plugins for us, the folder plugins and timestamper plugin, pipeline plugin. So these are the most important prerequisite plugins to be available for our Jenkins, right? And if you just go over here, you can see there is something called as C colon slash user slash Winton slash dot Jenkins slash war and this is something very very important so we'll see what this really is actually about so I'm just gonna copy this and I'm gonna go to the run and I'm gonna paste this path I'm gonna hit enter you can see this is where the Jenkins is actually putting all the most important files which is required for Jenkins itself so this is like a database for Jenkins right now. So it holds all the plugins, whatever you install right now. You can see that these are the few plugins which it has. Once the installations are going on there, you can see that the plugins are automatically created for you. So Windows Slave plugin is something has been created and there are all the plugins, whatever that you install is automatically going to pop up over here, right? And similarly, whatever project that you create is also going to sit over here. So it is going to create a folder where it's going to put all the repository of your project that you compile and put, right? So those things will come back later. But right now, just keep in mind that this dot Jenkins folder is what is going to be a most important folder for Jenkins. So if you want to delete your Jenkins setup completely, just go back and delete this particular folder alone. You're good to go. Your Jenkins is all new and it will start as a fresh start. So if you compare the team foundation server, you'll have a database dependency, but here in Jenkins, it is pretty straightforward. All you have to do is just delete this folder. You're good to go, right? So it is going to take a while for me for downloading all the plugins. So I'll be back once the plugin is installed. All right. Seems like the installation is done right now. And now if we just try to, there is one plugin failed, but it's okay. And now if I try to refresh this page once again, you can see that the installation is failed, just appears, but it's okay. I can just continue and it can, it'll ask you to create a first admin user. So the admin user I'm going to create is going to be the admin and the password is going to be admin as well. And the username is going to be my name and I can just give my email ID if I want. So I'm just going to give that and then I'm going to hit save and finish.
that's it. So this is the complete installation and it will take a while and it will show you that welcome to create your first, uh, oops, I can just hit continue as admin and it will say that Jenkins is ready. So I'm going to say start using Jenkins. There we go. So it will be showing you a greeting message, a welcome to Jenkins and create a new job. So that's it. So this is the very super easy installation of Jenkins. But right now the Jenkins is like a pretty plain and it has nothing. Meaning it just has the uh, information on the Java, but you don't have any information on the Maven or Git or NuGet or any other plugins that you have used in your project to perform the build and compilation. So in our next video, we'll quickly jump over and see how to manage the Jenkins using this particular link. And we'll see how to perform installation of different kinds of tools for Jenkins to perform the operation of build and test. All right, guys. So once again, thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day.